and this is just my opinion. I'm just some random guy who makes videos on YouTube. Welcome to this video. I've wanted to make this video for a while talking about selling on multiple platforms and if you should do that sort of thing or if you should not do that sort of thing. I have put this video off for a long time and then recently I got the question in a comment on one of my videos and so I thought what better time than now to make this video. Uh, the question came in, I responded to it, and I thought it would probably help somebody else. If it helps one person, that's great. We'll make the video. So before we get into that, let's go through what sold this past weekend. I have uh, several items here to pull. Let's pull them out and see what we got. All right, so we only had Poshmark and eBay sales come in this weekend. So we'll start with Poshmark and move onto eBay after that. The first thing we have here is this pair of uh, Nike Team Hustle D9 athletic shoes. These are youth size, so I paid $2 plus tax at the Goodwill bins, sold them for 15, 462. Pretty easy here, 462, nice. Next, we have a pair of Keds, got these at the bins for $4, sold them for 20, plus shipping. That's number 370, that's gonna be on this bin. Dark blue pair, Keds. Remember, if you cannot find your items in 30 seconds or less, you should reevaluate your storage situation. This next pair is also from the bins, this is a youth pair so we paid two dollars for them plus tax uh, the buyer paid 25 dollars plus shipping number 526 that's going to be in th this bin normally i would go to the other side where it's actually where it actually shows what numbers are in here 526 but i know that this is 501 through 520 and this is 521 through 540. see next we have a robert graham shirt just found this one last week paid 326 for it uh, that's three dollars 26 cents the buyer paid 23 bucks plus shipping but i gave them a shipping discount on posh of one dollar 72 cents it's number s120 literally the hardest the hardest item to get way back in the in the corner so it's literally the last item in this bag pink robert graham shirt i love selling robert graham because they sell super fast and they always have like a, a very special look to them they're very classy happy that that sold it sold really really fast just a few days i wanted 20 bucks or above and i got 23 plus shipping next this under armor heat gear running shirt it's s116 so guess what we're right back in that same box i don't even know why i put that box away s116 let's see if we can just kind of grab it 14 15 16. there we go that's a 2xl so one thing i love about selling shirts is i find a lot of uh xl 2xl 3xl 4xl in the thrift store i find a lot of it and as long as it's in good condition they just sell really fast so that was one i think that i just picked up recently all right these next items were sold on ebay all of them had plus shipping these first two pairs go to one buyer he bought both pairs and paid shipping on both a pair of blue high top customized converse and this pair of black customized high top converse both going to the same buyer 20 bucks each plus ten dollars shipping each all right, so for the blue pair, we're looking at number 361. Back to this bin that we were just in a second ago. Blue high top, customized. This was a real gamble buying these because these are customized. I bought these here in Virginia and uh, I bought five or six pairs at the thrift. They averaged out with everything that I bought that day to about $7, six or seven bucks a piece. But someone just used Sharpie marker and did some like artistic stuff. This one says hate and it has a heart with uh, X's on the eyes. And then this one says 90s baby and it says love on the back. So kind of specific, not great customization, not great artwork on them, but I think I've sold all, all the pairs that I bought. I might have one pair left. That, that does kind of look cool right there, the 90s baby. The next one we have is number 352. So in the box above, that's a black pair. Once again, customized. This one's a little bit cooler because it's got gold Sharpie marker on it. We've got 90s baby right there and it's got hate on the back we do not promote hate we promote love and this one has a broken heart we've got a pair of eddie bauer mercer fit shorts that's number j25 so i need my broom what i did with this broom because i store my shorts in the ceiling way up there with the broom i like hacked the top of it off so that i can snatch my hangers out J25. These are roughly in numerical order. They're not perfect, but roughly. And these are Eddie Bauer. I think they're cargo shorts. 
Um, Eddie Bauer shorts tend to do well in the summer. Obviously, they slow down in the winter, but not a bad pair. This person paid $18 plus $6 shipping, but I gave a discount uh, because I was running a little sale on my store. And so uh, it came out to $21 total out the door for this buyer. That includes the shipping. Next is number 073, a pair of Keds. They, the buyer paid $29 plus $10 shipping, uh, 073. So that's way, way, way on this side of the room. Uh, a pair of blue Keds right there. Awesome. I think I paid 350. Uh, typically Keds go for a little bit cheaper, like uh, 20 bucks plus shipping, but this buyer paid 29. If they would have sent me an offer for 20, I definitely would have accepted that. The next thing we have is a shirt, Adidas. Buyer paid $15 plus $6 shipping. And that is, number s235 oh super easy right here so this box is s221 through 240 I'll go to the back of it 235 adidas light. if i remember correctly i bought this shirt at village thrift which is an independent place and every friday they put all of their clothing 50 percent off their clothes are normally like 2.99 3.99 or 4.99 um I don't know why I don't just say like three, four or five bucks and I get 50% off. And so I averaged down that day. I think I bought like a hundred items and it was 237 or something after tax per item averaged out. So we'll just call it three bucks for that shirt. And it sold for 21 bucks. That's with shipping. Last item to show here is a pair of Polo Ralph Lauren youth or boys size 12 shorts. So I got these for free. All right. I thought I lost these and uh, or sold them because I could not find them, but I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. Number J, letter J, number 11, brand new polo. I think they paid $21 out the door. That's with shipping. I got them for free, so it's worth it to me. Good deal. Now let's talk, but uh, let's go outside and do this. Let's go see the horses. As we walk out here to the horses, let me just highlight this one comment here. I'll throw it up on the screen. Uh, this person says, underrated channel, new subscribers. Thanks for that. I appreciate that you feel that way. Maybe underrated, maybe properly rated. I don't know, maybe overrated. I know that at the, at the moment of recording this, we're like 18,000 subs. That's shocking to me. I'm uh, blessed and humbled and pumped and nerve wracked a little bit, but hey, thanks for subscribing if you did if you haven't yet i guess now's a good time to consider doing that all right let's check out the horses i got something i got something for you that horse jack is refusing to come over and then cole right there is oblivious to me being here normally when i'm out here they rush over and hang out but not today all right so the question in question that i received is should you sell on multiple platforms. And I have a yes and no answer to this. Something that kind of like has weighed heavy on my mind because I see people doing this or they'll post on Instagram or, or wherever they're posting that they're, they're doing multiple platform selling. However, there's a way that this can work against you. Let's talk about the yes way. Let's start off in the positive. Yes, you should sell multiple platforms. As you've gathered from this video, I saw on eBay and Poshmark and Mercari and Grailed. Uh, the way that those work is uh, I'm selling the same stuff and I'm cross-listing across these platforms. So shoes, shirts, shorts, uh, jackets in the winter time. I list them to my eBay. I use Vendu, which is a cross-listing platform. It helps inventory management and then it disperses into all those other platforms. Side note and shameless plug right here. If you want to try Vendu out, click the first link in the description below and you'll get one month 25% uh, off as a trial. Check it out. It's uh, I've been using it for a year and a half and it has boosted my sales for sure. And it's also great for maintaining your inventory. Cross-listing because you're selling the same items across multiple platforms is cool. I'm all about that. At what point should you stop doing that? Meaning at what point should you stop cross-posting or cross-listing your shoes, shorts, shirts, random items across multiple platforms that can all sell those items? I think that comes down to the amount of items you have. If you have 2,000 items or less, it's pretty manageable. But even 4,000 items, probably, I would say. Um, I've never crossed 4,000 items because anytime I get close to that, uh, I sell a bunch of items and it pulls me back under that number. I would say probably 4,000 items. You might need to narrow down into one or maybe two platforms because the cross-posting 
process, even using something like Vendu, would be very time consuming. So at that point, maybe just stick to one platform because you'll be selling so much on that one platform that you don't have time to be cross posting. Now let's talk about the no on why you shouldn't sell on multiple platforms. But before we do that, let's go find some chickens. The roosters are learning. The roosters are learning to crow. They're not good at it. Where are you guys at? Come on. Why did the chicken cross the road? It was shadowing. We introduced her in the past. There's Wallace. Wallace Woolsey. Oh. All right, so here's where I have a problem with selling on multiple platforms. Let's say you're selling on Amazon and you're selling on eBay at the same time. You're trying to be a used shoe seller on eBay you're trying to be a bookseller on Amazon. Those don't correlate, they don't cross, you can't cross post, right? Trying to be a bookseller, trying to be a shoe seller, you're being pulled in two different directions. There's a quote that says something, or a proverb that says something to the effect of, the man uh, or woman who chases two rabbits catches neither. And the same thing can be said for chickens. Uh, the man or woman who chases two chickens uh, will catch neither because you're going in two different directions. So my thought is, and this is just my opinion, I'm just some random guy who makes videos on YouTube, but if you're going to make it in selling online, you really should consider niching down. There's a quote that I heard recently that said, the riches are in the niches. I don't pronounce it niches, but it sounds better than the riches are in the niches. So when you niche down into something, you stand a better chance, you stand a better percentage, get a little bit luckier in making sure that you succeed in that niche. If you're going to grow an Amazon business, excellent, grow your Amazon business. Find that stuff, whether it be used books or, or items you buy from Walmart or Lowe's and then flip on Amazon, that's great, do that. If you're going to be a used shoe seller, then buy used shoes and flip those on eBay. Now, there is a little bit of crossover. All right, so let's say that you're an electronics seller, you sell video games or you sell DVD VHS players. There is crossover there. So you can sell those used on Amazon, whether it be FBA or FBM, you can sell those. Uh, if you sell them FBM, meaning merchant fulfilled, fulfilled by merchant, and you hold that inventory in your uh, warehouse or your, or your inventory closet or what have you, you can then list those on eBay as well. List them on eBay, list them on Amazon, they'll probably sell faster on Amazon. That's great, go ahead that way. You can't sell used shoes on Amazon. Currently, at this moment, when I'm making this video, you can't sell used shoes on Amazon. Now let's say you sell brand new shoes. You buy shoes from the Nike outlet and you sell them on eBay. And if you're ungated, you can sell them on Amazon as well. Then great, there's crossover there. You can cross post and, and all of that, that's great. But I'm just saying in the instance of sourcing two totally different types of inventory, to try to grow an eBay business and an Amazon business doesn't seem like a very smart thing to do, from my opinion. I've tried it, it didn't work out. That's why I went heavy into eBay. So I hope that makes sense and explains why you should and or shouldn't sell on multiple platforms at one time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you got value from it. If you did, be sure to click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's something that you can do that's free. that helps the channel out tremendously. If you're not subscribed already, consider doing that. And as always, I will see you on the next video.